All right, so you're moving to Georgia from Florida, but you really don't know what to expect. In this video, I'm gonna cover the biggest differences between living in these two states and give you some information to make the move as stress-free as possible. And that's coming up right now. Hey everyone, welcome back to Living in Atlanta. This YouTube channel is all about helping you get to know what it's like to live in the Atlanta, Georgia area. My name is Mark Brenner. I'm a realtor and team leader in Atlanta, Georgia. And if you need a real estate agent who really knows the Atlanta area and has a proven track record of success, I want you to reach out to me. You can book a Zoom call using the link in the description below. You can call me, text me, whatever you wanna do, but I love when my viewers turn into clients. All right, so today we're gonna be talking about moving to Georgia from Florida. We're gonna cover basically the biggest differences that you need to be aware of and how you can prepare to make this journey as stress-free as possible. This is part of a series, Moving to Georgia From, which is a series of videos about moving to Georgia from the most commonly relocated areas. Now, in order to avoid repeating myself over and over again about what it's like to live in the Atlanta, Georgia area, I'm really gonna focus on the differences today. If you need more information about what it's like to live in Atlanta, I would really encourage you to check out the playlist. There is a neighborhood tour for almost every neighborhood in Atlanta. There is home tours. There are talking head style videos like this. There are budget videos where you can get a sense for how far your budget is gonna go in Atlanta. There is a lot of free information on my channel, so I'd really encourage you to take advantage by checking out the playlists. All right, so let's get right into moving to Georgia from Florida. Now, the good news is for you Floridians that of all the places I talk to that people relocate to Georgia from, Florida is one of the most similar, right? We border each other, and in terms of culture and people, there are actually quite a few similarities. But in terms of lifestyle and things like architecture and the style of home, there are some big differences. So we're going to go over both today. And the great news is at this point, I've helped many, many people and families relocate to Georgia from Florida. So I'm going to touch on some of the biggest surprises that they had so that you can be prepared. Now, definitely the number one difference that I experience with people moving here from Florida is the age and the style of the home, right? Many homes in Florida are newer. And even if they're not newer, they're typically uh, very uniform, right? You don't see as much diversity with the style and architecture of the home in Florida as you do in the Atlanta, Georgia area. So oftentimes my home buyers from Florida can sort of have expectations that they bring to the Atlanta, Georgia area that the homes aren't really gonna meet. And often these buyers can get very nervous when we're looking at homes that are 40, 50, 80 years old. Florida has grown so incredibly fast that even if you're not living in a new construction community, you're probably not living in a 100 year plus old home. Now that's not to say all the homes in Atlanta are very old, but I don't want you to be scared off by older homes, and that's one of the biggest differences. Old does not necessarily mean bad. When we're going to look at a home, we are gonna get a professional inspection report. We're gonna look at the age of the major systems of that home. We're gonna look at how that home was maintained over time. I can tell you from personal experience, I have seen homes built in the early 2000s that are in way worse condition than homes built in the 1940s or even the 1920s. You have to remember, if a home was completely renovated, if they did not scrape the foundation, the realtor still has to list that home as being the age of when the foundation was built. So you could have a home that was originally built in 1930 that was scraped down to the foundation and built pretty much completely new. And there's no reason to think, although the age of that home is 1940, that it's going to cause you issues necessarily. So I always encourage my buyers from Florida not to be scared off by the age. The other scenario where this issue can come up is when we're looking at inspection reports. Now, just generally speaking, home buyers can get freaked out in inspection reports because they're very detailed. They're often 40 to 60 page reports, and it's an inspector's job to really pick apart the home and call out every every little detail that's going on. But because Floridians are already scared about the home being older when they see an inspection report that is many pages long, they can feel like, oh my God, this home is a money pit, I need to cut and run. That's really not the case. And so when I work with clients, we go over again, the dollar value of each item. You can have an inspection report that calls out 50 items, but if those are items like an outlet not being a GFCI outlet, or chipped paint, or a light not turning on, these are typically very low dollar items. Now, if we see something going on with the foundation or the roof, 
or electrical or plumbing, then yes, we definitely need to address those issues. We need to have them fixed or compensated for, and we may have to terminate if those items are too big. But you don't wanna worry about the quantity of items in an inspection report. You wanna worry about the quality and the dollar value that those items represent. So one of my biggest encouragements to you Floridians moving to Georgia and buying a home is understand that the homes are gonna be older, it's gonna be a different style of home, it doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. You have to judge each home based on its merits and judge each home's merits based on the dollar value of the items that need repair. Now let's run through some other major differences. So obviously hurricanes are way less relevant in the Atlanta, Georgia area than they are in Florida. Now yes, there can be some effects of hurricanes that come up through Florida and Atlanta, but generally speaking, we are, I've never had to evacuate in 15 years here. And I know Floridians, you've probably uh, had to make plans during a major hurricane at least once in your life. And that can really be embedded in your psyche. But Really, the Atlanta, Georgia area doesn't suffer from any major natural disasters. Yes, we can get impact from hurricanes. We've even had the occasional tornado touchdown. But really, in terms of natural disasters, Atlanta, Georgia is a fairly safe place to live. Probably the biggest thing you need to be concerned about is flooding, potentially. And so you want to look at things like the grading of the slope and what's going on with the drainage. But relax, you don't have to worry about hurricanes, really, in the Atlanta, Georgia area. And of course, living in Atlanta, you are not going to be close to the beach. I know that water-related activities are huge all throughout Florida, and there are water-related activities in the Atlanta, Georgia area. It's just not going to be ocean-related activities, okay? It's going to be lake and river-related water activities. And so, you know, if you're really hoping to have close proximity to the beach, but you're close to Atlanta, you know, the closest beach is about 267 miles away. That would be Tybee Island. And then there's Hilton Head, which is 282 miles away. So although we do have a lot of water-related activities, you're not gonna be as close to the beach as you are now probably, unfortunately. And of course, the weather here is gonna be very different. Florida is unique in that it's pretty uniform throughout the year, hot, humid, sunny, uh, usually rains once a day. Georgia is much different. We're gonna have four distinct seasons. We're gonna have a very short, kind of cold, rainy winter, a prolonged, hot, humid, sunny summer, and an absolutely gorgeous, mild spring and fall. Now, I love the climate in Atlanta, and I think you will too. You'll have plenty of sunshine, but you're not gonna be getting rained on every day, and you're gonna have a little diversity with your seasons. Here are some other major differences that you may already know about, but Florida has no state income tax. Georgia, on average, state income tax, people are paying about 5.75%. Now, touching again on things to do, like I said, water-related activities are huge in Florida, mostly related to ocean activities, taking out a boat, hanging on a beach, whatever it may be. In Georgia, it's gonna be rivers, it's gonna be lakes, going up to Lake Lanier and renting a boat, or maybe kayaking and canoeing on the Chattahoochee River. Florida, of course, is huge in hunting and fishing and RVing, and the good news is you can get all those things in Georgia. So it's interesting. There really are a lot of similarities. It's just slightly different. You know, Georgia is very green. You're going to see trees everywhere, different trees than what you're used to. You know, you're going to need to get used to seeing trees probably very close to your home. It's one of my favorite things of living in Atlanta. We are known as a city in a forest, but we have so many parks trails, green spaces. The good news is if you're an outdoors activities person, I think you're gonna really love Georgia. It's just gonna be slightly different activities. The other thing to know is your allergies might be worse in the Atlanta, Georgia area. Pollen is crazy here. Every year in the spring, you're gonna walk outside. There's gonna be a, a coat of pollen. Your car's gonna be yellowish green, right? Because there's gonna be a coat of pollen out in your car. And this occurs repeatedly in the springtime. So if you do suffer from allergies and you haven't had issues in Florida, just be aware. You know, you may need to stock up on Claritin. Hopefully it doesn't bother you that much, but it does bother a lot of Atlantans. Now, Georgia is obviously not as flat as Florida. If you enjoy the mountains, North Georgia is going to be fantastic for you. From the hiking to the camping, you got the Appalachian Mountains, you got the Blue Ridge Mountains. You even have vineyards in North Georgia, right? So you're gonna have a little bit more diversity in the landscape and the elevation, especially as you go into North Georgia than you would in Florida. We talked about income tax. What about property taxes? Tip Typically, Georgia property taxes are going to be a little bit lower than what you're currently used to paying. The average rate in Florida is about 0.98% and Floridians pay an average of $1,752 a year. 
In Georgia, the average is 0.83%. We pay an average of $1,346 a year in property taxes. Now this moves into the overall cost of living and typically your cost of living is gonna be slightly lower in Georgia. The median property value in the state of Florida is currently $378,000 and for Georgia, that's about $306,000. So typically, you're gonna have a little bit more buying power depending on where we're talking about in Georgia. Now, both Georgia and Florida are some of the fastest growing states in the entire country, but Florida is actually growing more quickly than Georgia. If you look at a list at the top 10 or 20 most relocated to cities in America, Florida is gonna have like five to seven of those cities on the list. It's absolutely crazy how quickly Florida is growing and this can have benefits and there could also be some downsides of that in terms of cost of living. The good news is both have very strong job markets. And not only are the job markets strong, but there's diversity in the economy, especially in the Atlanta, Georgia area. We have a very diverse economy. We're not dependent on one job sector. We've got TV and film, we've got banking, medical, we've got shipping, technology, education, a very diverse economy in Atlanta, Georgia, which is great for opportunity, whether you're starting your own company or business or continuing your career at another company. There are 27 companies in the Fortune 1000 in Atlanta, and 19 of those are in the Fortune 500. So this is a great part of the country to start or further your career. There's a ton of opportunity in the Atlanta area. Now, another thing to note is Florida is typically ranked higher for public education. Of course, you can get a great public education in the Atlanta, Georgia area, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, that's not the case all throughout Atlanta. So those are some of the major differences between life in Atlanta and life in Georgia. Now I'm gonna just make some comments overall on the biggest differences and similarities in the lifestyle. Overall, I think the biggest differences come in the climate, the things to do, and the overall lifestyle. Right, the climate is gonna be a big change for you. You are gonna get some colder days. You might even see some flurries throughout the year. You're not gonna get a thunderstorm in the afternoon every day here, and you're not really gonna have to stress about hurricanes. In terms of things to do, this is gonna have a lot to do with where exactly we're talking about that you're coming from in Florida. But as I said, you're not really gonna have those beach-related activities. You are gonna have fishing and hunting and camping and off-roading available in Atlanta, Georgia. It's just gonna be on a lake or on a river in a heavily wooded forest. But your lifestyle is gonna be fairly different living in Atlanta, Georgia than it will be living in Florida. Now, where it's fairly similar, again, depending on exactly where we're talking about where you're coming from, is the people, right? This is the South, and I know North Florida is extremely different from South Florida, but these are not extreme differences. Like, for me, I came from the Northeast of Georgia. That was a huge cultural and people difference. I don't think you're gonna have that big of a difference in terms of the people and what they're like coming from Florida to Georgia. And that runs into politics and religious beliefs, right? We're in the Bible Belt. We're not in one of the coastal cities. The politics are a little bit closer to one another than if you were coming from one of the coastal cities. And so while the weather, climate, and geography will be very different, the people, beliefs, and politics aren't gonna be so drastically different. And fortunately, one of the biggest similarities is gonna be the opportunity. Georgia and Florida, like I said, are some of the fastest growing parts of the entire country. And so these are great places to start businesses, continue your career, start a new career. There's a lot of opportunity in both these places, so there won't be any drastic changes there. All right, so there you have it. Those are some of the biggest differences, living in Florida to living in the Atlanta, Georgia area. These are some of the things that clients that I've worked with coming from Florida have mentioned that I've noticed that we have to address. So I really hope that helped you feel more prepared to know what you're getting into and maybe even help you make your decision if the Atlanta, Georgia area is right for you. I love Florida. I love Georgia. And I get to help people all the time purchase a home in the Atlanta, Georgia area from Florida. So if you need that help, if you need guidance figuring out what the right neighborhood is for you, we like to pride ourselves and being the absolute experts. You can see from the videos that we put out that we really know our stuff here. And we have a lot of experience helping people make this transition. So if if that is you, if you need help, we would love to hear from you. Please feel free to reach out. Leave a comment below, like, subscribe. It's a huge help to our channel. I really appreciate you watching, and until my next video, I'll see you next time.